Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, November 3rd. Okay, so today we have the moon in the Scorpio energy completing its transit, meaning we're coming to the final degrees of the Scorpio energy. There is going to be an intensity as we kind of really take a good look at the darkness, at the voids, at the pain, at the trauma, at the dysfunction of our inner realm and our outer realm and get a grip on what actually needs to be changed, what needs to be transformed into something better. Now that pressurized system is going to put us in a realization that we are going to further explore and experiment with when the moon shifts into Sagittarius energy. So the moon will be in the Scorpio energy until 1251 AM Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into that void, not a relatively huge window where things are gonna get shaky, things are gonna get unstable, and certain we move into the Sag energy 120 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the transition is always a welcome one because we're coming out of the darkness, out of the funk, out of the shadow work, out of the detective type of emotional and mental state in order to arrive at a brand new light, a brand new path, brand new perspective, brand new outlook, brand new truth. And the Sag energy acts as the light at the end of what is a very dark tunnel in Scorpio energy. And then we kind of renew and refresh our emotional realm, our mental realm, because of course, Mercury just moved into the Sag energy here yesterday. And then we start kind of asking the right kinds of questions, our curiosity peaks, we're open minded, we're pushing the boundaries of our thoughts, of our ideas, of our understanding, of our opinion. We're definitely going to fly high with some new concepts, some new ideas, some new goals that again, we will be piecing together. So we have that going on. Now, we also have the moon when we first shift into this Sag energy, the very first aspect that it makes is a conjunction with Mercury, because again, Mercury just moved into this Sag energy here yesterday. So our heart and our head are immediately resetting in this particular energy. And then a very interesting thing happens, we have two back to back major oppositions taking place. So the first one is going to be hella intense because it's between Mars and Pluto. Again, they're in their rulership over Scorpio season. The second one that follows shortly thereafter is a little bit of a lighter vibe, but still intense nonetheless. And it's between Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, and Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion. So, you know, very rarely do we have these types of frictions happening back to back. It's happening for good reason, because of course, an opposition means that we're reaching a particular breaking point, choice point, decision point, where certain ideas and emotions and circumstances have to kind of come to a head in order for us to gain perspective on what it is that we're moving away from and therefore what we now want to move closer to. All of this energy is providing us with a great opportunity to kind of break out of that old programming, that old conditioning. We are, especially in the Sag energy, now being supported to dream a bigger dream, to explore different ideas, thoughts, opinions, insights, directions that we may want to take. But of course, our heart is going to get involved, that's Venus. Our head is already involved, that's Mercury. Mars, he's at the final degrees because, hey, side note, Mars is moving into Leo energy here at the end of the day. That's a whole vibe in itself that I'm going to talk about here in a second. Just to me, it just screams that today is going to be the pivotal day where we start breaking away from the old. We start making moves toward the new. Again, towards the end of the day, especially, we're going to start seeing kind of the little sliver of the moon start reappearing in that night sky. And slowly but surely, with that illumination of light, we are also going to gain clarity. And so we have already put that new moon in Scorpio energy behind us, which means that we are at the pivotal point in Scorpio season where we're no longer that deep and dark reflecting back and all that is wrong and all that is problematic. Instead, we're starting to kind of get ourselves together here. We're taking on a different form and preparing to be empowered to take action to make moves. And of course, 
course, when we talk about that, we talk about Mars and Mars himself is on the move here today. So there's a lot going on. May I also just recommend if you haven't kind of gotten yourself familiar with the energy events that are going to be taking place here in November, I would definitely listen to that overview. If you haven't been doing the work in that November energy guide specifically tailored for your zodiac sign, I would definitely jump on the wagon. This has been a back to back, back to back domino effect of energies. And once we get today over with, we're given a little bit of a pause, if you will, to kind of settle in this energy and get a grip. And by the end of this week, and again, side note, please listen to the Ascension forecast for this week if you haven't already. By the end of this week, we're moving into the first quarter moon phase, which just happens to be taking place in Aquarius energy. So that means level of awareness, level of consciousness, acting as the observer, seeing solutions where there's only been problems and actually coming to a particular choice point, a decision point on what we are going to do to move on and move forward. So I would say today is a very pivotal day. With all of that being said, there are 10 different aspects popping off here today, five of them. So half of the day is going to be spent kind of refining the moon with all the moon aspects. The other half of the day is going to have all these other planetary energies creating tension, friction, and some green light go ahead points in order for us to gain different perspectives in our emotions, in our mental plane, in the past, in our present, and in our future. So it should be a very interesting day. We kick off the day with the moon still in the Scorpio energy with a beautiful interaction, a trine with Mars. So the two interactions that we have here today with the moon still in Scorpio energy, there are only two before we go into that void. And those two aspects are positive aspects, starting with a trine with Mars and a sextile with Pluto. So the moon in Scorpio the only interactions that we are doing are interacting with the two rulers over the Scorpio energy. So I think that's pretty profound as well. The trine with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger is taking place at 29 degrees. You know, we have 29 degrees that the moon is in Scorpio energy. We have 29 degrees of Mars being in Cancer energy. And they're both water signs, thus the trine. So this is helping us to get inspired, helping us to get motivated, helping us to get determined, helping us to get oriented in where it is that we want to make moves. We want to take action to a not only continue to preserve and protect what it is that we find to be of worth and value in order for us to kind of continue to grow and strengthen and build upon. And then b the actions, the moves that we want to make to actually cut out the crap, cut the ties with the old that is not serving us any longer, that we do not resonate with any longer and just getting us kind of honed in on building ourselves up cultivating this inner spark fire and flame this energy for us to execute very quickly upon when given the green light go ahead to do so that second aspect just takes place 11 minutes later and that's a sextile which is a growth energy it's a harmonization energy it's an empowerment energy with Pluto, the great transformer, who again, 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. We love Scorpio and Capricorn energy working together because when you water Earth, something grows. We have this empowerment of our mood, of our attitude, of our ability to kind of boss up, to take control, to take our power back, especially with what it is that we have to close the door on, what it is that we have to demolish and destroy in the physical realm where the physical structures are concerned. Pluto is only in this Capricorn energy for a couple of I'm going to call them weeks, but technically we're probably on the, the day countdown at this point. Um, and, you know, the clean sweep that we are being gifted with as far as opportunity goes to kind of examine what existing stru structures are still alive and well that need to be removed in order to free up the path for us to move on. This is what we're dealing with. And so the emotional change and transformation going on within us right now is profound. It's hella intense. And it's a beautiful thing that it is happening in the way that it is, because this is the last aspect that the moon and Scorpio is going to be making. We're going void, of course, 51 minutes into the day. We sit in that void for, you know, a short amount of time, a half hour ish. And then the moon shifts into Sag energy. So we automatically feel lighter. We feel brighter, more confident, more optimistic. We're a little bit more dreamy. Now, 
137 a.m., because again, we lock into the Sag energy at 120, 137 a.m., we have our very first aspect taking place, which is the moon and Mercury coming together for their conjunction. Again, Mercury just moved into the Sag energy here yesterday. If you haven't listened to that Astro forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. If you haven't done the work in your e-guide, I'm going to recommend that you do that. It's very pivotal, especially saying as what's going on right now, we are going to be revisiting at the end of the month when Mercury retrogrades in this Sag energy. So the moon and the sun coming together, that's our heart space and our head space. They're in Sag energy. So we're optimistic, we're confident, we're futuristically focused. We're dreaming a bigger dream. We are pushing the boundaries of our ideas. We are willing to explore and experiment with new perspectives, new ways of aligning that heart with the head in order for us to get heart and head aligned in our inner realm so that we can start taking action and making moves in our outer realm. Very interesting. So we sit in that energy until 624 a.m. And again, all Eastern Standard Time. This is when Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, comes into a direct opposition. So he's basically sitting across the table from Pluto, the great transformer, who is at the final degrees of this Capricorn energy. So 29 degrees Cancer for Mars, 29 degrees Capricorn for Pluto. The Capricorn Cancer axis is about safety, security, stability. And Mars is all about action and passion and desire. And Pluto is all about damage and destruction in order for us to totally destroy the old so that we can rebirth, resurrect, renew our own damn selves, our physical reality and start something fresh. That's how transformation takes place. So this is not going to feel good, okay? And opposition never does, especially between the god of the, of the underworld and the god of war. That's going to be hella intense. And this is going to definitely test our limits, especially where energy management is concerned. First of all, we're reaching a certain breaking point, boiling point, if you will, or a particular point where we're going to start seeing the forest past the trees. Now, this is going to be a time of, I'm going to say, intense rebellion. We want to confront, you know, the things that aren't working, especially if we've been betrayed, especially if we've been deceived. We're going to want to kind of deal with that head on. This is about power struggles. Pluto always is. And we're currently struggling for power. We're struggling for clarity. We're struggling to kind of identify where it is that certain blockages and challenges are really preventing us from moving on and moving forward. And we want to overcome those obstacles. And, you know, as of recently, we've been kind of turning a blind eye because we really haven't had the energy to tackle said issues. But now this is like a fire being ignited in our heart space and under our ass to do all of the hard things. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of urgency, a lot of impulsivity that's coming from Mars. He has ants in his pants. We're at a 29 degree. That is a critical crisis karmic degree. It's a mastery degree. It's a perfection degree. It's also a death degree, right? Because something has to end in order for us to begin something new. This is going to be intense. There's going to be an edginess, a pushiness in our own mind, in our own heart space, in our own impulses. We're going to be receiving this kind of let's call it, you know, rebellion or resistance from other people, we are going to be kind of tested either from, you know, the external realm or in our inner realm, we're going through a major transition at this particular point in time. And so a lot of external circumstances, again, Capricorn energy need to kind of end, they need to come to a boiling point, they need to come to a, you know, explosion point in order for us to realize that guess what, you can't necessarily put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Okay, he's broken, he's fragmented, and he loses a lot of the smaller pieces. That means that he's got holes in him. Okay, so a lot of the things that we've been desperately trying to hold on to and preserve Mars and Cancer energy are now coming to a breaking point where the damn egg has fallen off the wall. And now we're getting real and raw and, and very realistic with the fact that we can piece this, you know, Mr. Humpty Dumpty back together again, but he will never be the same. So now we're taking a good look at all of these external situations that are coming to a breaking point. And of course, this is going to create internalized breaking points as well. But this is a test. 
This is our test in our ability to manage our energy to resist those egoic programming and conditioning impulses. This is a test in order for us to rise up, to do better, to be better, to take care, to take charge of our lives, to rise up in our own power, to take control back. Now, are we going to see that control be, you know, in our hands right away and we're going to know what to do with it? Absolutely not. This is where the edginess comes in. And on the greater, grander global stage, I really hope that it doesn't manifest in its deepest, darkest form because we are going to definitely see some major conflicts pop off. And we could see that within ourselves. We could see that in our own lives as well. And so we just want to kind of get very clear on the problematic areas, on where we're frustrated, on where we're banging our head against the wall, on where it is that we feel under control or under the power of other people. And technically speaking, we're rising up to take our power back. And again, when we talk about taking our power back, that's very much a Pluto in Aquarius energy, which is coming at us here on the 19th. Thus, why the urgency to kind of address these particular situations and circumstances now at the final degree of Capricorn energy, because we're about to rise up in it, rise up above it when we move into that Aquarius energy later in the month. Again, if you haven't listened to the overview for November, please get ahead of the game. Major, major things happening on the greater, grander global scale and in our own freaking lives. So I know that was a mini rant that you weren't really prepared for. I wasn't really prepared to go on that rant either, but there it is. Uh, we're going to continue this rant because we sit in that energy. This took place at 624 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 1025 a.m. We have our second opposition. This time it's between Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Sag energy already. Again, experimenting with independence, with freedom, exploring different options, different opportunities to stabilize her physical realm, her emotional realm, her money matters, her relationship dynamics. Venus is in a direct opposition sitting across the table from Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who is retrograde in Gemini energy. Now, fun fact, uh, Jupiter rules over the Sag energy that Venus is currently in. So to kind of go against the ruler of the energy that she is currently in is an intensity all in itself. Jupiter being retrograde, this means that this, this pressurized system, this tension, this conflict is going to be trapped in our heart space. Again, please listen to the Ascension forecast forecast for this week, we talked about how the heart activations could possibly manifest. Now, this particular interaction, intense in its own right, but a lighter vibe uh, than, of course, you know, the God of War and the God of the Underworld. This particular opposition is going to create tensions in our heart space because we're realizing that we want something different out of our lives. We want something more we want a deeper connection. We want deeper meaning, uh, especially when it comes to our, you know, romantic relationships with our friendships, basically relationships and money matters. And because Jupiter's involved, this is a little bit extra, meaning this is an over exaggerated emotion, not to say that it isn't valid in having some sort of basis to it, but it's going to feel way more emotional, way more urgent than it actually is, okay? We're going to feel a little bit more dire, a little bit more desperate than the situation actually provides us to feel. And so here's the thing. When you set yourself up for, let's call it, when you have expectations from yourself, from other people, from an outcome, from a situation, from a circumstance, the minute that you have some sort of expectation in life is the minute that you are setting yourself up for disappointment. That's why it's so important to live in the moment, to live in the present, to accept people, places, and things as they are, not for the way that you wish them to be. Expectations lead to disappointments. And so right now we have this sense of, uh, of just way overinflated expectations. Like we're, we're exaggerating our expectations to the ninth degree. And because of this and because of the disappointment and semi betrayal that we're currently feeling in our lives because of the expectations that we have that people, places and things are not living up to, we are feeling like just beside ourselves. OK, we just feel the need to kind of come out with the way that we're feeling. And of course, it's going to be extra. It's going to be extra drama because, you know, that's what Jupiter does is magnify 
overstate, over exaggerate, over inflate our emotional disposition. And so what we're getting here is like this overwhelming soul crushing feeling of where it is that we're not happy in life, where it is that we're so bored, so discontent, where it is that there's just such this new want, need and desire for more. We want more out of life. We want more out of the people that we're sharing life with. We want more to kind of look forward to. And, you know, when you recognize where it is that you want more of something, the automatic ego programming is to put us in a scarcity lack of mindset, which is not the way to manifest anything good. And so there is this I'm going to call it urgency in our heart space to kind of figure out what it is that we don't want, what it is that we do, what it is that we want more of and how we could actually go about doing that. And so this is a time for us to kind of, again, look inward, Jupiter's retrograde, especially in the Gemini energy, taking a good look at our thoughts, especially our thoughts about what it is that we're feeling that we're lacking in our lives. And so this is going to put us in a situation where it's almost like we are willing to make adjustments to our headspace, to our perspective, to our expectations in order to not be as disappointed as we currently feel that we are. And so there is this element where we have to be careful to not like commit to something or to commit to a plan or to align with a particular choice or decision because we're not in the green light go ahead to do so yet and what we're going to end up doing is biting off more than we can chew and then coming to a particular point where we have to deliver on said commitment or said obligation and we're going to realize that we we can't and then not only are we disappointed in our own damn selves, but we're disappointing other people because we had no business committing to things that we thought that we could do that we weren't in the position to be able to commit in this present moment. So again, that was a rant all in itself, wasn't planning on it, but there you go. And then here's the interesting thing. About 20 minutes later, the moon, now in the Sag energy, going to make a very awkward interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. And he's retrograde in this Aries energy, helping us with this let's call it ego identity crisis or rebranding or identity empowerment. We're going through a major change in who it is that we are. And so the moon interacting with Chiron, of course, is emotionally going to highlight where it is that we're not feeling so hot. How could you feel good coming out of that back to back opposition? How could you feel good with realizing that you don't particularly enjoy your life? How can it feel good to realize that certain people, places and things have really hurt you because they've disappointed you in ways that you should have never set yourself up in order to actually feel? So now we're highlighting the wounds. We're highlighting the pain. We're highlighting the trauma. We're not feeling so good about it. We're not feeling so hot. Now we sit in that particular energy for about a half hour at 1122 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Venus is going to trine Chiron. This is a beautiful interaction because it means that we sat in the funk. We did some really deep thinking. We did some really deep connecting with our heart space. And Venus, because this is a trine, it means that we're working with like-minded elements and fire on fire, first of all, helps us burn away the junk and the gunk, helps us burn through the cords, the attachments to the past, to some emotions, to some thoughts, to some expectations. And then the fire energy reignites the fire, the spark, the flame that we need to actually build, to grow, to heal, to evolve, to be better. So this is Venus and Chiron coming together to help us process what the hell we just experienced in our inner realm. This is us willing to boss up and turn the crappy hand that we've been dealt into something that actually works for us. This is us feeling empowered and inspired enough to actually take the troubles, the challenges, the obstacles, the struggles that we're currently realizing that we're currently in right now. And we are motivated and inspired to actually flip the script and to really use that as an opportunity to not only better understand understand ourselves and recognize our own power, but to actually use our creator abilities to flip the script and use something that is not favorable and alchemize it into something that is. 
So we're opening up our head space. We're opening up our heart space. We are willing to learn different ways of looking at things, different ways of communicating, different ways of making the adjustments in our day-to-day lives, starting with our head and our heart in order to rise up from the fears, from the doubts, from the insecurities that of course we just realized are essentially paralyzing us in this present moment in the here and now. So we do have a great opportunity to not only heal our heart and head within ourselves, not only heal the way that we were looking at the obstacles and challenges that of course are coming straight in our face, but we also have the ability to heal certain relationship dynamics if given the opportunity to do so because we are real and raw and open and vulnerable and willing to do what we need to do to compromise, to reconcile, to rise up, to move on and to move forward. And I, for one, think that is a beautiful energetic domino effect. The moon is then going to trine the north node. Now, the north node is in Aries energy. So this, again, is fire on fire action. And emotionally speaking, again, we are thinking about the future, thinking about where it is that we want to end up. We're redefining our goals, visions, and dreams. And we're starting to figure out in this new realization that we're currently processing within us. Again, we're still in Scorpio season. Who and what needs to stay, needs to go? Who and what is supporting us and aligning with that goal, vision, and dream for our future selves? And from that, we can process, again, what we have to do, what we have to pursue, what we have to cut off, what we have to close the door upon. That takes place at 1228 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We sit in that energy until 913 p.m. when the sun in Scorpio energy is then going to make a very positive interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. So what the Scorpio and Aries energy have in common? That's right, Mars. Mars solely rules over the Aries energy, co-rules over the Scorpio energy. And at this particular juncture, Mars is at the final 29th critical crisis karmic degree of this Cancer energy, again, sitting across from Mr. Pluto, the great transformer. That's important. Now, the Sun in Scorpio energy, shining a very bright light on what needs to change, what needs to kind of be, let's call it highlighted as far as the major blockages go. This is us rising up. We're no longer kind of stuck in the past. We're no longer stuck in the pain and the trauma. This is the point in time where we start getting empowered to take our control back as a creator of our realm, of our reality. And because the North Node is involved, seeing what it is that we can do in this present moment to align with our future goals and vision, seeing what it is that we actually need to learn in order to do better, in order to be better. That is a highly significant energy that is going to set the tone for the next coming of weeks. And then at 11.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have our last aspect taking place here today, which is Mars, the god of war, moving out of that final critical crisis degree of cancer energy and moving into Leo energy. So again, please listen to the astro forecast for this event. Please capture what is going on for you in your November energy guide. Just a reminder, we are going to be in this energy Well, technically, Mars moves into this Leo energy. Mars is going to retrograde early December. We're sitting in this until early January. And then we will be revisiting this Leo energy from April until June. So we are going to be retracing the steps that we are currently making right now, the actions, the decisions, the choices, the direction, the path in which we are currently walking. We are going to be revisiting this in April to June. Again, another reason why I encourage you to do the work, really capture what's going on for you in those resources and those workbooks and those guides that I've created, because we're going to need to come back to this particular time frame when we move into the new astrological calendar in 2025.